Okay, let's start with our warm up. We're going to start off with running in place. Let's angle this down a little bit so you see more feet and less ceiling. And punches. Keep your hands up. Keep your feet moving. Last week. Hands up. Hands up. Feet moving. And shuffle forward and back. Make sure when you do this, your hands are up. <clears throat> you don't want to get in the habit of doing anything in class with your hands down. And knees. Make sure the standing knee stays bent. And switch sides. And ladder steps. Kicks front side back. Okay, check your pulse. If you're not up to at least 120, do that set, do that two more times, do that set. Running in place, punches, shuffle back and forth, knees, ladder steps and kicks. At least two times, probably three. You need to get your heart rate up over 120. Okay, once you've done that, you come back to me, we stretch. Reach up. Reach straight out to the front. Chin is up here, back is flat. Not rounded this way, it's flat. You're pushing your chest toward the floor. Reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest toward your knee. Now we're going to side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. Down in the side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Come up, cross one foot in front of the other. Here, 
chin up, reach for the floor. You should feel this in the hamstring, mostly of your back leg. Switch your feet. And then have a seat. Feet out. Make sure your toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Keep both butt cheeks on the floor. Reach over to one side. So I'm not facing my knee. My ribs are coming down towards my knee. Other side. And straight out to the front. Make sure your toes and your chin stay up. Pull your feet in. Come to a squat. Push your knees out. Rock back and forth. Heels should be on the floor here. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs. Okay, then walk your feet a little bit apart if you need to. Put your hands on the floor. You're gonna tuck your chin around your back and then lift your chin and push your chest to the floor. So tuck and round. And then chin up, chest to the floor. Tuck and round. Chin up, chest to the floor. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do conditioning. Um, I'm gonna go through this series once because you don't need to sit here for 15 minutes and watch me do push-ups. I explain to you what each exercise is. I'll show them to you and then I'd like you to run through the set at least twice, three times would be better. Okay, first one is inchworm push-ups. So when you do an inchworm push-up, you start here, you reach down, you put your hands on the floor. Knees are straight. You walk your hands out. Okay, you can do your push-up on your toes or on your knees. Keep your elbows tucked into your body when you do your push-up. Don't leave them out there. Keep them tucked in here so your elbows are close. Your middle finger should be pointed straight ahead. Okay, so we start here. Hands down, walk them out, push up position, middle finger straight forward, elbows are tucked into my body, push up, and then walk all the way back up and stand up. And again, okay, that's called an inchworm push up. Save it for a minute. Next thing we're gonna do is just a complete straight body sit up. I'm gonna start here, feet are straight out. My chin is tucked, so my head's not touching the floor and my hands are straight up. Hands are not coming behind me, they're staying towards the ceiling the whole time. I just sit straight up. And I don't just sit here, but when I get here, I reach up to the ceiling and back down. Okay, so there's your core, and we have one more drill for lower body. We're gonna do squat and lunge. So when you squat, you step out, feet are more than shoulder width apart, my toes are straight forward. When I do my squat, you don't wanna be here. You wanna be here so your shoulders stay over your hips. Now when you do your lunge, you step back far enough that this knee is still at a 90 degree angle. You don't want it out past your toes like that. That stresses your knee. So we do squat and lunge. Squat and lunge. Squat and lunge. Squat and lunge. Okay, so you have inchworm push-ups, you have the straight body sit-ups, and you have squat and lunge. I want you to do 10 of each two times through, 
And then when you come back, we'll work on the we'll work on the lesson for the week. Okay, this is the third week of the month that we are working on speed. So this week we're talking about the illusion of speed. Illusion of speed meaning if I'm standing here sparring with you and I'm not moving at all. When I go to throw a technique, you're going to be able to see that there's a change in me from not moving to moving. But if I'm already moving around and I go to throw a technique, it's harder to detect the change from motion to different motion than it is from stationary to motion. So we're going to do some techniques and then we're going to do some illusion of speed drills with them. The first one is just a jab cross. So from my guard stance, um, I've got about four, I'm not straight onto my target, but I'm not way sideways. It's really hard to throw the cross from sideways. I'm at about 45 degrees. I'm throwing the jab, I rotate my hip, and then rotate again and throw the cross. Hands are always up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then ten sets on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing with the front leg front kick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then one last technique. <clears throat> From a self-defense point of view, I would consider this a forearm to the throat and then a punch to either the throat or the solar plexus. From a sparring point of view, which is kind of where we're going with this illusion of speed, I'm thinking of it as a high block and a punch. So I high block and I'm going to keep, normally I would drop my hand back down and cover my face, but I'm going to keep it up so that the hand that I blocked is caught up there and stays. So you're going to do 10 sets on each side. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> and then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> okay, so we did ten sets on each side of each set of techniques, each combination of techniques, stationary. Okay, so we're gonna add motion to them now. <clears throat> so I'm moving around. And we're moving, just moving around as if you were sparring. Okay, when I say go, you throw a technique. Go. 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 <clears throat> go. Go. And switch stance. Go. 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 Now same thing with the front kick. Go. 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 Other side. Go. 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 And then with the high block and punch. Go. 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 Switch stance. Go. 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 Okay, I need to turn the heat down in here. I keep turning it up, down. And it keeps making itself go up. Okay, so now for the next part of the story, you need to get a partner. Actually, two more parts of the story. You need a partner, and your partner needs a target. Focus shelves would be ideal. Uh, hands work, small pillows work, piece of paper, pot holder, dish towel, doesn't really matter. As long as you can hold it in the air, and they can, or they can hold it in the air, and you can hit it. So what you're gonna do to start, is your partner's just gonna hold the target. Exactly what we did. You start here, you're moving around, 
And when your partner says go, you throw a technique. So you're going from motion to they say go, and you throw a technique. In motion, then they say go, and you throw a technique. Okay, I want you to do at least five of each combination that way. So jab, cross, front kick, high block punch. Then <clears throat> your partner's gonna get in motion too. Okay, so your partner's gonna put the pad or the target in one hand and you're both moving around. When they hold the target, you have to figure out. So if they're coming here, you gotta block, don't punch them in the face. Okay, if they hold here, you're gonna do jab cross. If they hold out here, you're gonna do front kick. So you're both moving. So if I'm the pad holder and I stop and throw the target and as soon as you see the change in my motion, you have to throw the technique. Again, five sets of each combination, jab cross, front kick, high block punch. Okay, two open hand forms for you guys to review this cycle, action karate form four and action karate form eight. And when you do strike tests, you have to be able to do both of these forms on your own. You guys are red belts, eventually you're gonna test for black and you need to know all your forms, not just the one from the last cycle. So we're gonna run through both of them and then I'm gonna give you um, homework, something that I want you to work on with the two forms. So we start with action karate form four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, go up, in, out, touch down, back, push down, and set. And then same thing, action karate form eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. We're gonna move or I'm not gonna be able to go to the side. Okay, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and set. Okay, so you're gonna do each one of those forms two different ways. Okay, the first one, you're gonna pick a phrase out of the form that you like. And so for action karate form four, I'm gonna take the first phrase just cause this one makes sense to me for this drill. Okay, so your partner's just gonna sit and watch you and when you're gonna move around and when they say go, right into that, that phrase as if it was a self-defense or a sparring combination. Okay, and we're right back to it. When your partner says go, okay, also, to pick a combination from Action Karate Form 8 to do the same thing with. So, um, let's see, what are we gonna pick from 8? I think I'm gonna pick the slide up side kick and step back. Okay, so I'm in motion. My partner says go. I slide up side kick, I step back. I'm back in motion. My partner says go. I slide up side kick, I step back. Okay, so I want you to pick a, a phrase or a move from Action Karate Form 4 and one from Action Karate Form 8. And I want you to do that with your partner. I want them to at least five times to call go. And you go from that still space right into the motion. Well, I mean, it's, when I say still space, I don't mean not moving. I mean space where there's there's no nothing happening except this. So you go from here to the, the move from the form. Okay, five moves, five times with something from Action Karate Form 4, and five more times with something from Action Karate Form 8. Then, <clears throat> you're gonna take your form. And this is where we get back to self-discipline. This whole month, <clears throat> we're working on the student creed, self-discipline, common sense. This week, I must use common sense before self-defense. Okay, so common sense. Common sense tells us that we need to practice our forms before our black belt test. It tells us that doing these moves over and over and over again burns them into our muscle memory so that if we do need them for self-defense common sense before self-defense but that means you might sometimes need to use self-defense these moves are burned into your muscle memory so they're there if you need them so you take action karate form four and action karate form eight and you do each one of them five times as fast as you can without getting sloppy okay so i'm not looking for this 
and looking for speed, but still with proper technique. Okay, so three self-defenses. Um, passing the horizon from the beginner curriculum, sword cut from the intermediate curriculum, and touch down with the coupon from the advanced, your red belt curriculum. Okay, so we're going to start with passing the horizon. You guys, should, this is not new, this is review. Somebody grabs your hand from behind and pulls it up here. They might put their other hand on your shoulder. So you have to look first and make sure that it's somebody that you need to be defending against. Then you drop your weight and you throw an elbow. Whichever hands they have, your opposite foot is going to step off to the corner. So they have my right hand now. My left foot's going to step off to the corner. I'm going to turn over, grab their hand, turn them over, punch, kick, cover out. Okay, so the person who's attacking is going to end up here because you took their hand and you turned them over. Okay, so that's the beginner one. From the intermediate curriculum, is sword cut and sword cut is not the attack the attack is an overhead club attack and the self-defense is get out of the way and protect your head the sword cut is throw at the end which i really can't show you because there's nobody to throw here and there's a very good chance that you're not going to be throwing anybody in your house <clears throat> okay so the important part is if somebody's trying to hit you with a stick you're going to get your head out of the way and you're going to block their arm not their stick their arm then your right hand comes up and grabs their hand, one blade of their hand. Your left hand grabs the other blade of their hand and you come under their arms and you step. Now sword cut is that motion that you do, which is the throw. And if you actually do it to somebody that hard, you're gonna dislocate their shoulder, which if somebody's actually trying to hit you in the head with a stick and you just it, it, maliciously and you dislocate their shoulder, oh well. But if you do that to somebody that you're practicing with or somebody in your house, that's not gonna go over well. Okay, so I'm going to show it to you this way too. They're coming at you, you get out of the way, you block, you grab, you come under their arm, you step, you take them down. Make sure you have the stick, kick, cover up. Okay, and then we're going to do touch down. Now, <clears throat> we've been practicing this one as if somebody comes up behind you and grabs you, and you scoot your butt, touch down, and strike the inside of their leg. Okay, but we're going to do it now as if somebody is throwing a kick at you, a roundhouse kick. So they're going to throw a roundhouse kick and you're going to step in and you're going to catch that kick and you're going to come up and slam your coubaton. You've got their leg here into the outside of their knee. So it's still touch down. The, chain, the touch is chamber for the down, but you're going to step in, catch, touch down. Step in, catch, touch down. Okay, so from this angle, they're throwing this kick at you. You're stepping inside of it. Catch, touch down. Okay, then I want you to take each one of those self-defenses. We did passing the horizon, single hand grab from behind, passing the horizon, um, overhead club attack, sword cut, and a round toss kick, touch down with the coubaton. I want you to practice each one of those. If you have a partner, that would be ideal, but even if you don't, you can practice in the air the way that I just showed you five times each with speed. But like I said, when we were doing the forms, I it, speed has is it got a balanced place. It's as much speed as you can get without getting sloppy. If you get sloppy, it's not gonna work as self-defense. And if you practice it that way, when you need it, it's gonna be useless. Okay, single stick set. We're gonna do both sides. I'm gonna show it to you in both directions. We start here, right hand, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head. So it sticks in my right hand, my right foot's back. Step forward with your right foot, strike high, low, high. Orbit, strike, stick keeps going, my foot follows it. <clears throat> Step back, cover my head again. Step forward, strike low. Switch hands. Pump front kick, my, left, my right leg kicks. Then I'm gonna step back with my left foot. So my left foot's back and the stick is up on the left. I'm gonna step forward with my left foot, high, low, high, orbit, strike, follow the stick, cover your head, strike down, switch hands, and back to blood cup. Okay, so I'll do it going this way. It might be easier if you see that that way than if I start with my back too. So here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head, <clears throat> high, low, high, 
orbit, strike, keep spinning, cover your head, step forward with your right foot, strike down with the right hand, switch the stick to your left hand, pump front kick, step back with your left foot, so your left foot's back, stick is in my left hand, it's up covering my head, come forward, high, low, high, orbit, strike, continue to stick around, foot follows it, cover your head, left foot strikes, steps forward, stick in the left hand, strikes down, switch hands, come back to blood cup, and you're done. Okay, so if you are a beginner, that's the one that you're doing. If you are not a beginner, you're practicing it. So if you're a beginner, you're gonna go right off now and you're gonna do that five times. The rest of you are gonna get another stick. <clears throat> and we're gonna do top and bottom. Okay, so we start on the top. Right, left, right, left, right, left. That's one on the top, left, two on the top. And after the second one, instead of coming back to here, we come to here. And then we do two sets on the bottom, right, left, right, left, right, left. That's one set, and then we do a second set. And at the end of the second set, instead of coming back to here, we come back to here. So it looks like this. Okay, so none of that's new. You might not have put it together before today, but you've done it all before. So what I need you to do right now is I need you to take everybody, regardless of what rank you are, single stick blood cup, five times through. That's the both right and left. That's one time, so five times through. Um, if you are green and up, you're doing this set. It's, we call it a 12 count. You're doing 12 high and then 12 low. Um, all the way through five times. If there's somebody in your house who can practice with you, much better, if not in the air. Okay, um, advanced class bow form, basic bow form one. Um, if you're in the Karate Kids class, Karate Kids advanced class, this is your required form, this curriculum. If you were in Tung Sudo and you are brown two or one or red or apprentice, this is your weapon for this cycle. <clears throat> so we're just gonna run through it all the way once, talking while we do it. And then I'm gonna give you something I want you to do with it. So we start here, one, comes up to the corner, reach underneath, strike. Two, other corner, three. Now I'm going straight to the side, cat stance. One, protect your knee. Two, break the collarbone. Three, up, down, side, side. Four, disarm and step. Same thing on the other side. So front end of the bow drops, front end of the bow, right leg, Swing around to the other side, block. Step to front to chingle chassis or front stance. Break the collarbone, three, up, down, side, side, four, disarm and step. This disarm is in the cat stance. Then I'm gonna to come to the front and disarm and step again. This one is in a horse stance. Step, chamber, step in front, stab. Step, chamber, step out to horse stance and stab over the top and strike. So when I do this strike, hand comes over my head, my left hand comes to my right ribs. Jump and spin, switch your hands, right hand under the left ribs. Stand up, switch the hands back, bring it here. Next count, step, back, stab, pull it out. <clears throat> One, right foot steps back, the end of the bow that's at the front comes over the top, breaks the collarbone. Two. Up, down, side, side, three, four. Right foot moves, comes in, comes back out, block high. Um, you're gonna strike somebody's knee there. Weight comes up so that back up mass is in the strike. Bow comes over the head, left hand comes to the right ribs. Bring the bow up, switch your hands, bring your weight up so your back up mass in the strike. Strike low, right hand is under the left ribs. Hug the bow. So all I did is wrap here. We did this in last week's video. If you're not sure what we're doing, go back and check it. Okay, left foot comes in, steps back, unwind the bow. So I'm in front stance or chingle chassis facing the back. I'm gonna move just a little trip on the rigs. 
last count. Right foot comes in and comes back to the front, still to the front of the room. Bow comes over the head, switch your hands, left hand on the right ribs, and done. Should be. Okay, so if you're still confused on that, go back to last week's video where I broke those last few moves down or run through this a couple more times. And then what I want you to do, we're working on speed. Illusion of speed really doesn't lend itself to what we're doing here. But I want you to do is I want you to take that form and I want you to do it five times as fast as you can without getting sloppy. Okay, if you've been practicing in the house with a, with a screaming stick like I have, I want you to go outside um, so you can use your bow. Uh, it's a different feel. I just do this in here because I don't really want to take out the ceiling fan. Um, but five times with speed. <laughs> 